the Rothko and St. Basil chapels. Mark Rothko, one of the United States' greatest mid-20th century painters, was born in Russia on September 26, 1903. The suite of 14 paintings in the chapel, completed in 1967, were created at the height of his career and towards the end of his life. The chapel is a brick building with gray and rose walls. It is also in an octagonal shape. The broken obelisk located outside of the chapel is a landmark as well as a tribute to Martin Luther King Jr. As soon as you pass through the thick metal doors in the entrance, there's an immediate sense of serenity. It's absolutely silent inside the chapel. Between the paintings and the lighting of the main room, the viewer is presented with a calm feeling. The architecture tells a story and that it creates a mood of the human life, a cycle of the human condition. The chapel seemingly transcends most modern religions and culminates into something that we can all relate to. paintings themselves are primarily black in color with differing hues of gray and blue, all accumulating into a work that creates a serene and meditative atmosphere. The skylight plays off the interior and architectural style of the Rothko Chapel, illuminating all of the paintings in just the right light to reveal the subtle gray and almost bluish hues of Rothko's work. There doesn't seem to be any particular point of emphasis within the chapel. If anything, the emphasis lies in the entirety of the work of art coming together as a whole. The focal points could be considered the lighting of the interior space, as well as the hues of gray and black in the paintings themselves. From an interior design and architectural standpoint, the Rothko Chapel was extremely well planned. The Chapel of St. Basil is a chapel on the campus of the University of St. Thomas in Houston, Texas. The structure of this chapel is composed of three basic geometric forms, the cube, the sphere, and the plane. The cube, which is made of white stucco, is the main area of the church where services are still held regularly. The dome, which is bright and gold, sits on top of the cube section almost like a crown. The gold dome on top of the structure proclaims the university's Christian character and can be seen from miles away from large buildings throughout downtown, uptown, and the medical center. The entry to the outdoor narthex of the chapel is created with a tent-like flap extending over the entry, creating an enclosed space that is still outdoors. Upon entering the tent-like flap of an entrance, the ultimate focal point is off-center to the left where the preacher's pulpit and altar are located. This chapel was created to include an interesting play on light, as there are no man-made lights installed in this structure. The cross-shaped window on the wall allows for an ever-changing backdrop of shadows throughout the day. If services are ever held at night, candles are lit. In combination to the white interior and strategic carved walls, the few candles easily illuminate the room. The size of the chapel and the amount of negative space used around the walls leads to a more intimate and focused circle. The way the Stations of the Cross have been etched into the west wall under the crossed window shows an extreme amount of attention to detail. The St. Basil's Chapel fulfills a feeling of peace as soon as you enter. You can tell the architect was on a mission to make people say wow. On the west side of the chapel is a prayer garden and meditative ground. The centerpiece of the garden is a labyrinth surrounded by crepe myrtles and gravel paths. Also in the garden are three fountains representative of Trinity and four benches which mark the 